Harley Quinn number one from DC Comics, apparently. Uh, written by Ma Amanda, Con Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti, with art by Chad Harden. And this is the first issue, the first real beginning of the Harley Quinn series that we got the wacky Zero issue for last month. And it was really solid. Uh, they brought it into a cohesive story. It's very Deadpool-esque, kind of wacky, zany stuff. She's got some sort of a rodent that talks. I don't know if it's a muskrat or a groundhog. And there's a wiener dog and a motorcycle and carnies. And it's just, it's awesome. It's, it's mayhem and it's a little more terrifying. That, not, terrifying is not the right word. It's a little more graphic than I expected it to be, being that it's kind of a fun book. But uh, it's sort of a madcap, dark comedy, violence. And, uh, and if you're Harley Quinn, there are two jobs available to you. You can either become a therapist, as Harley and Quinzel is qualified to do, or you can become a roller derby queen. You decide which one she's going to go for in this issue. Oh, so choose your own adventure? <laughs> well, you can pick whichever one you want. I just don't know which one she'll end up with. But Harley Quinn number one, lots of fun. I have to... Give props to Chad Harden for his artwork in this issue. It looks like it's, you know, traditional art. And it's very good. And, this, and my understanding is he was found through a talent search, kind of, sort of, an open casting call for Harley Quinn number zero. Uh, so, cool. I love it when new artists are discovered and their artwork <laughs> is awesome. Saga. Mm, Saga 17 is here. And this is Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. And if you don't know that by now, I can't help you, really. Uh, the best comic book being published is still the best. <laughs> we get to uh, basically see a little bit into the mind of Prince Robot the Fourth, and I don't want to spend too much time there because it's freaky. <laughs> We've I been don't want to spend too much time there because you're not allowed to watch it on iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Saga, <laughs> Saga soon to join Sex Criminals not being carried by Comixology or the iTunes store because <laughs> it's a rated X comic for the most part. Uh, not the whole thing here, just a little portion. It's still it's so, so good. Uh, Really, the only reason we're talking about it is because we like to talk about stuff that's good. So the story continues to, to move forward. We get flashbacks. We get more and more details about the supporting cast of characters. So good. So good. And we get the answer to the ultimate question of Saga. What is the opposite of war? Yes. War. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Next up, we've got Mark Waid's Daredevil, uh, written by... Someone Rodriguez, Carlos? Written by who? Oh, I'm sorry. Written by Mark Wave and Javier Rodriguez. Mark Wade's Daredevil, written by... Mark Wade and Javier... Some little Rodriguez guy. Uh, with ink. He didn't write it. He's the It art. says storytellers. Story it's like they did in the old school days of the Uncanny X-Men, where Chris Claremont and John Byrne were listed as storytellers. That's just because they were fighting over credit for who wrote it. They're collaborators. No, Mark Wade is a very caring individual. He wants to make sure that Javier Rodriguez gets credit for being a storyteller, which he is. You can't tell the story without... Words and pictures. Well, tell that to novels. Uh, <laughs> Mark Way's Daredevil, we love. This is no surprise to anyone. And this is advancing the story forward. And we're seeing sort of a, maybe not a conclusion, but a uh, coming to a point of the, Son of the Sons of the Serpent storyline. And it was just great. It, it had adventure and swashbuckling. And it had people and interaction and family and cancer. <sighs> Daredevil's awesome. It is such a good book. There was great, uh, great. There were great scenes between Matt Murdock and what's her face, the DA, the district attorney. What is her name? I don't know. I'm gonna take a few minutes here. Is her name in the artwork? Figure this out. Does, does her name show up in the artwork? No. Nope. No, it's not. It's in the words. Oh, that's where they live. Why does Doctor Strange look so decrepit in this book? <laughs> he's like, eh. anyway. When he's outside of Greenwich Village, his uh, powers. He didn't have Wong with him. <laughs> it's carry his cane or whatever his manservant daredevil such a good book and it is coming to an end only the restart about 30 seconds after it ends with the same creative team in the mighty marvel manner in the all new marvel now super duper cool stuff universe it's the same universe they just gave it a better name it is it is red sonia number six mm, good book gail simone ha good god good god <laughs> Written by Gail Simone, artwork by Walter Giovanni. Uh, six issues with the same creative team is such a rarity these days, uh, especially from Dynamite, no offense, but this is such a strong book. Excellent writing, fantastic artwork that complements the story. They are storytellers. This is a great storytelling team, Gail Simone and Walter Giovanni. This wraps up the first story arc of Simone's run on uh, Red Sonia and has turned me into a believer. Uh, I was not a fan, as I've mentioned numerous times, of the character before this series, 
uh, except for the Spider-Man crossover stuff in the 1980s. <laughs> Where Mary when, Jane was Red Sonja? When, no, I don't remember. There was a Marvel team-up between Spider-Man, Spider-Man and uh, Red Sonja. Uh, yes, and I believe she showed up in some other crazy story. But that's beside the point. This is a great book. <laughs> Uh, if you haven't checked it out, I think we've got the previous issues still mm-hmm. available. We've got a, a third printing, I think, of number one. But pick up the first trade and give it a shot. Uh, it's absolutely worth your time and money on this. Uh, totally digging it. And it, there's there's a constant discussion within the comic book community of not enough women working in comics, not, not enough minorities working in comics. I hate to even use that word, but... Um, this is a strong female writer writing a strong female character, which you don't get to see too often, and hopefully we see a lot more of, whether it's a strong female character or not. Um, but Gail Simone is kind of blazing new territory, I think, which she's done before, writing Birds of Prey and, and uh, Batgirl and other things. So there's some other folks like Kelly Sue DeConnick, and that's all I can think of. There's only two female writers in <laughs> comics that I can think of that are writing female characters. I apologize, Mrs. Simonson. <clears throat> oh, Louise Simonson, yes. And Nesenti. She's writing Catwoman. Do we call her Wheezy? I Is it Wheezy Simonson? Because Walter will kick my ass. We yeah, he could take us. <sighs> Great stuff. Yeah, Red Sonia. Strong chicks, well-written characters. They've got swords. Great book. Next up... All new X Men number twenty, written by Brian Michael Bendis, with art by someone Peterson. Brandon. Brandon Peterson. And Mahmoud Esrar. Oh, how come his name's not on the cover? It oh, it is. is. It's over here. Yeah. I threw the Marvel logo in there. Threw me off. <clears throat> this issue features X twenty three coming into the all new X Men as we saw at the end of the last book, and uh, as you can see from the cover image, it is the closest we will ever come to the Cyclops Wolverine fan fiction I've been writing. <laughs> but uh, it's lots and lots of fun. All New X-Men's good. Every issue. It is. That's it. It's great. Next, Move along. <laughs> Superior Spider-Man, number 24. We love it. It's awesome. Dan Slott, Christos Gage, Humberto Ramos. Doc Ock, Spider-Man, gets possessed by the Venom symbiote. Doc Ock can control it better than anybody else because he's super genius, smart guy. Stuff happens. Uh, supporting cast is involved. Carly Cooper may become a goblin. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> there's a great final scene between the... Superior Spider-Man Venom guy and Mary Jane, which is very reminiscent of the uh, early days of Venom in Spider-Man. Love it. Dan Slott, write, write Spider-Man forever, please. <laughs> was anybody else confused with the end of the last issue? I thought that the symbiote was moving on its own. I didn't realize that it grabbed Ock Peter. I was confused by that. But that's apparently what happened. I don't know where it grabbed Ock, but yes. <laughs> Lastly, this week, we've got an Inhumanity tie-in, which isn't really that much of an Inhumanity tie-in. It's mostly an opportunity to talk about The Indestructible Hulk, number 17, written by Mark Wade with art by someone else. Clay Leslie Mann? Mann? Is it Clay Mann? Blue Man Group? Michael Mann? Michael Moore? Amy Mann? Michael Moorcock? Michael Moorcock. He's a famous fantasy writer. Ulrich? Oh, come on, people. Clay and Seth. Clay and Seth Man. We were way off. Well, you had half of it. Art Man. <laughs> Art Man. Where was Art Man? He was on something. I'm Art Man. He was a reporter. Carry on. Indestructible Hulk. Uh, bad stuff's happening in the Marvel <clears throat> Universe. Black Bolt blew up uh, Adeline, and there's Terrigen mists all over the place. And when you have weird radiation mutations, the man you call is Bruce Banner. Except that apparently all the other big brains in the Marvel Universe think they're better than him. And so this is really a clash of egos and a fight for respect between Bruce Banner and Tony Stark and Beast and all the other brains. And it's a lot of fun. And of course, uh, being belittled by Stark makes Banner angry. And that, we know what happens then. And, and that's the end. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we're off until after the first of the year. Friendly reminder, reminder I don't know if this happens outside of the U.S., but <clears throat> new comic book day for the next two weeks will be on Tuesday. So Tuesday, December 24th, and Tuesday, December 31st, new comic book day. Um, if you're shopping local, we're open 10 to 4 both of those days for your shopping needs, for your new comic fix. And, yeah, that's it. Uh, heck of a year for comics. Maybe we'll do a recap uh, after the first of the year, go through some of our favorites. But feel free to mention those in the comments. Oh, and I do have to apologize. Uh, YouTube hates us, apparently, as well as many others. 
uh, because they're not letting us post videos longer than 15 minutes anymore. So we're having to break them up into two parts if we're over 15 minutes. So thank you for your patience with that, and who knows what's going to happen. It's a total pain in the rear end. God bless. Happy holidays. May all your Christmases be white, and may you always turn off the video before Carrie Fisher starts singing. Hey, the bluebird of happiness, leave doo-doo in your dresser drawer. You can build a little birdhouse in your soul. <laughs>